News and detail on the hour from the WOR newsroom. The United States military command in Saigon says the purpose of the continuing bombing raids on North Vietnam is to cripple the daily life of Hanoi and Haiphong and to destroy the North's ability to support its forces in South Vietnam. The unidentified official said the ultimate reason for the bombing is to punish North Vietnam's government to the extent that it will sign a new peace agreement. American bombers did resume their mission Saturday, Vietnam time. Inside South Vietnam, Saigon government forces battled enemy soldiers 25 miles southwest of Da Nang and reported killing 42 communists while one South Vietnamese soldier died in the fighting. In the 15 days of bombing, 93 American airmen are listed as killed, missing, or captured. 27 aircraft have been lost, including 15 B-52s. The bombing offensive has brought out a verbal offensive against it by some congressmen. Today, 22 House Democrats urged Speaker Carl Albert and the party's national chairman, Robert Strauss, to call a special party conference to organize opposition to Mr. Nixon's Vietnam policy change. And on the GOP side, New Jersey Senator Clifford Case said the B-52 raids were without justification. Case called for Congress to set a date for cutting off war funds. Ohio Senator William Saxby, who previously supported Mr. Nixon's Vietnam policy, explained why he now intends to join the war money cutoff side in the Congress. I'm very much alarmed. I, I think it's unproductive, and, and uh, I think that it's uh, just a ridiculous turn of events to uh, wait until 1972 and to uh, say that now we're going to have complete victory by bombing them back to the Stone Age. I thought we'd have made that decision even before... Uh, uh, President Nixon was inaugurated his first term. Police report at least three persons have been killed and eight others injured in an auto accident tonight in Bridgewater Township, New Jersey. The accident involved five cars and occurred just after 7 o'clock in the southbound lane of Route 287. No identities available yet of those involved in the multiple vehicle crash. The blood supply shortage is getting worse here in New York City. Today, the Greater New York Blood Program asked metropolitan area doctors to postpone all but urgent surgery because blood supplies are dwindling. The program distributes bloods to hospitals in the city. It covers approximately 280 hospitals. As of tonight, the program said it had only 600 pints available. The blood donation center will be open tomorrow. It's at 310 East 67th Street. Hours are from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the Red Cross building at 150 Amsterdam Avenue will also be open those same hours tomorrow for blood donations. Well, here it is again. The Public Service Commission has authorized a total $100 million per year, $110 million per year, temporary rate increase for Con Edison gas, electric, and steam services. The commission said that if it denied the temporary rate hikes, it could seriously jeopardize Con Ed's ability to render service at the uncertain level of reliability that now exists. Con Ed says it needs increased revenue for construction to provide service for more customers. Those who use the minimum allowance of electricity, for example, would get a rate hike of about 2.8%. The major Con Ed electricity users would be paying up to 11.1% more. We'll have more news after this. Here's a safe driving tip from General Tire. During the busy holiday season, highway traffic almost doubles. So please, exercise an extra amount of patience while driving. Now here's another tip from General Tire. Whether you drive a sports car or sedan, a compact or a limousine, General Tire has the tires you need at prices you can afford. Choose from steel-belted radial tires, glass-belted original equipment tires, Wide, raised white letter tires, puncture sealing tires, all built to General Tire's exacting standards. Check your size and price at your local General Tire retailer who wishes you and yours a safe and smiling holiday season. General Tire, the safe driver tire company. The WR Radio News time is five minutes after 11 o'clock. No end-of-the-year surprises from Anthony DeManzo, the chief representative of the 12 unions on strike against the Long Island Railroad. 
Today, Devonzo met with men from the Long Island Freight Users Association. They told Devonzo that the union should put their wage increase dispute with the railroad to binding arbitration. Devonzo rejected that suggestion, said the pay demand should go to the Federal Wage Price Board. 